Hello and welcome to the first of what I hope is many videos on the assignments of CS106A. Now what is CS106A you might be wondering? Well, a simple Google search will give you the answer, which I will do now for you. CS106A is a course by Stanford University on an introduction to computer science and programming methodology. Now they put this up online for anyone in the world who has a computer and an internet connection to be able to do if they want. Now obviously you're not going to get a grade from their staff or a nice bit of paper at the end saying you've completed it, but it does give you an opportunity to learn this stuff from some of the best lecturers going around. So I'm going to go through these assignments and uh, the, the workload myself and I'm going to do it. And I'm going to try my best to learn how to program properly in Java. Now, there are two problems with doing it like this. Is that first, of course, you're not going to get the piece of paper at the end or anything like that. Secondly, you don't have anyone around to be able to talk to about this shit. Now, when you're in a class, you can just, you know, you don't plagiarise, but you can discuss things and, you know, bounce ideas off people and this and that and you're going to have a good time um, you know, as opposed to doing it alone in a dark room with uh, no one around but your cat to help you so I want to uh, go through my solutions to the assignments when I do them and if you are having trouble with that particular assignment if you are like me and going through it then maybe you'll be able to uh, to see how I did it and perhaps implement something similar for yourself. Alternatively, if you have already done the assignments or if you haven't, but this shit is easy for you, you can look at what I've done and go, holy shit, that's a really bad way of doing this. This is how you do it properly and that way I can learn too. So by all means, comment and ask for help or, or give me feedback if you want. Don't be shy. And now that we've got the uh, the intro shit out of the way, let's move on to uh, the assignment. Now I want to assume that you've um, you've read you know what the assignments are and done the first couple of uh, lectures, so you know what's going on here. But basically, we are controlling this robot ca called Carol. We can only use the commands that Carol has at, dis at her command, which uh, means you can't do any advanced Java shit. You've only got a basic, you don't have any variables or anything like that. You can just use the commands that she's given, and you can write methods for Carol that let you do stuff with the uh, with the moves that they've given you. Now, problem two has uh, well, we've got this earthquake happening and. The pillars of this building are looking kind of shit. So wherever there, so you see here, there's a pillar. It's got three bits missing. This pillar, pillar has two. This pillar has three, and this pillar has two. And our plan is to basically fix each pillar, and then we're going to have a very strong building which will not collapse, which I'm sure will make many people very happy. Now, even though the world in this example looks like this, we cannot rely on it looking like this. What we can rely on is that Carol always starts off in this square. There is always a pillar on row one. And then for every row after that, every four spots, there's another pillar. So every four along, there's another pillar, as you can see here. And there's another pillar there. However, this world could extend out to 14, 15, 16, 17, and there might be another pillar there. We don't know. We're just given a world which Carol has to fix. The other thing that's important to note is that you can't have a world that ends in the middle somewhere. The, the, la the wall that encloses it off is always after a pillar. Like, so it could be row six. Sorry, row 5 could be the last wall, or row 9 could be the last wall. But it could not be row 11, could not be the, where the wall ends for the world. So 
so now that we have that out of the way, let's move on to this. Now, I haven't actually done this. Uh, I've done this for the benefit for me, but what I find really helpful with these assignments is to actually just sit down and think about what's needed before you go off and write the code. Because often you can uh, think you can really think through the problem and get better solutions than you would if you just went and coded as you wished. So this is an example of a world that Carol might have to solve. <coughs> and we have Carol here and she starts off looking this way. And we have a column here. So our first plan is to move Carol left and then check and then move her and check if this is a beeper. We don't want to put another beeper down if there is already a beeper present. So we check that there's a beeper, there is a beeper, so we move on to the next square. Is there a beeper? No. So we place one there. We check the next square and the next square. Next square, oh no beeper. And we hit this square and we see, oh there's a wall there. So we know that this column is now completed. So we move Carol back down. Turn her to face left again. Or face eastward I should say. Move her along four spots because we know a column is every four. And then do this column in much the same way. Move her back down, go to the next column, keep moving her up, fixing the column as we go. Move her back down, go to the last one here, go check and say, oh, this is the last one here because there's a wall in front of us. We're going to hit up. Oh, this has no beeper. We're going to go up. Oh, there's a wall here. So we must have finished all the beepers that need to be replaced in this world. So that's the basic idea of this program. That's what it has to do. Now, to implement that, what I've done is write, wrote this little program. And it says, this is where the, where the magic starts. Well, front is clear. Front is clear is the method we can see to check if um, if there's a wall. We run this method I made called fix Carol. We'll get into fix Carol towards the end. And as soon as the front is no longer clear, then we do it, we run fix Carol one more time, and we are done. Now, what fix Carol does is it's basically well, I'll show you what fix Carol does. So fix Carol, we have three methods. We fix a column. We fix a column. Making sure the beepers are all present as we keep going up. Then we move back down the column. And then we move to the next column. And then that process repeats again and again and again. Until our front is no longer clear. So until we get to this point. And then we have to run it one more time. Why? Because Carol hasn't done this row yet. This only gets executed if the front is clear. It's not clear, so we have to run it one more time. So she goes back up here. Get it, fixes it in. Goes up here, checks the wall. Yep, fine. Moves down here. And then the program stops because there's nothing else after that fix Carol to do. Now let's have a look at fix column, which was, of course, the... Uh, the very first thing that uh, Fix Carol had to do. So first of all, remember we're fa we start off with Carol. She's facing uh, eastward, so we have to make a face northward. And to make a face northward, all we do is go turn her left. So we've turned her left now, and then we get into this piece of fun code. While our front is clear, so our front is now this way, we check if there's a beeper present. Remember, in this, in this example, beeper represents a piece of stone that's missing from a column. And then we move. 
Okay, so. What is this beeper check? So we come down here. So if there's no beeper present, we put down a beeper. Now, if there is a beeper present, then we do not put down a beeper, because there's already one there. That would be stupid. And that happens for every square until we hit the front, until we hit this red line here, indicating that there is a object in the way that she can't walk past. And once we do that, we still need to, we need to check that last square for a beeper. If there's none present, we put one down. And then we are done with that column. We have fixed the column. Carol is cooking with gas. So what was the next thing we said we, we had to get her to do? Move her down. We had to move down the column, which is quite simple, really, to be honest. So remember, we're facing this way at the moment. We simply have to turn her around and then keep moving all the way down until we hit something that we can't move past, i.e. the boundary of the wall, of the world. So, we've turned around, and while the front is clear, we move. And once we get down to the bottom, we just turn left, so once again we're facing eastward, and we're off ready to fix the next column. So we've met... So our code for moving to the next column is, once again, if front is clear, just to make sure uh, we're not going to run into the end of the world, we move four times. This is a for loop. You could also write, which moves it four times. We could also write move four times here. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. But I just wanted to use a for loop because it looks a little bit cleaner. And once we get to that next column, once again, we fix the column, then we move down the column, and we move on to the next column until we hit our wall. Okay, so lastly, I'm just going to run the program to make sure it all works fine. So we're just going to hit run. It's going to take a little while because my computer is so old and uh, slow. But here we go. There we go. Okay. So this is the default world they've given us to test stone mace now. Let's see if it works. And as you can see, Carol moves from column to column, fixing it perfectly. So now let's try another world. Uh, sample quad one, was that one? Yeah, that was the one we just done. Sample quad two. This is a different one. So you can see it's a bit more tricky. Let's see if my code I've written works well too, for this world as well. And once again, we see him moving and fixing the column. And everything is done. There are no error messages. It works perfect. So if there are any questions, feel free to write a comment or message me. Any, um, any insults of my coding style will be sure to put in as well. And I'll see you next time.